This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2209. Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel, part two, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free, always with permission from the sites, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now, today's post is part two from yesterday, so if you're new or are skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That was episode 2208. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel, Part 2, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. There is a time and a place for instability. Some exercises, like the bird dog and stir the pot, use instability to place greater emphasis on the core musculature. And physical therapists have been using unstable exercise devices like wobble boards and rocker boards for years to help with the rehabilitation of knee and ankle injuries. But with few exceptions, training with a light weight on an unstable surface isn't going to do a better job of improving your core conditioning than the exact same exercise done with a heavier weight on a stable surface. Core Conditioning and Spinal Rotation While I'm on the subject of core conditioning, I want to briefly mention the issue of spinal rotation. Probably the most popular spinal rotation exercise is the broom handle twist which is without a doubt one of the most pointless exercises ever invented. That's not to say there's no need to train the muscles that twist the torso, but there are far better ways to do it than twisting from side to side with a broom handle on your back. Rather than rotation, think resisted rotation. And by resisted rotation, I'm talking about exercises that require you to resist forces trying to pull your torso around to the left or the right. Let's take the single arm dumbbell row as an example. Although this is primarily an exercise to work the muscles in your back, the external obliques, the muscles on the side of your waist, are also involved. That's because they're actively preventing your torso from twisting. The same principle applies with other single arm exercises, such as the overhead dumbbell press. I recently injured my shoulder, which meant I couldn't do any heavy lifting with my left arm. However, Because of a phenomenon known as cross-education, where training one limb has a small but significant effect on strength in the other, I wanted to carry on training my right side. So, I did some heavy single arm pressing using just my right arm. The next day, I could really feel it in the muscles on the left side of my torso. That's because they were working extremely hard just to keep me upright. This is a much more efficient use of your training time rather than doing a bunch of side bends, which also falls into the not a great use of your time in the gym category. The long lever plank shoulder tap is another good example of what I mean. In the starting position, you're resisting spinal extension, meaning resisting that arching of your back, which makes this a particularly effective exercise for working rectus abdominis. Removing one of the contact points, meaning your hand from the floor, introduces an element of instability, which then requires your body to resist rotation. If you find this exercise too difficult, keep your hands under your shoulders in a push-up position rather than out in front of your body. Exercises that involve resisted rotation are a far better choice than those involving actual rotation, such as the Russian twist or windshield wiper, both of which make me cringe every time I see someone doing them. If you have a history of back injury, or even if you have a healthy, pain-free back and want it to stay that way, I'd highly recommend that you steer clear of any exercise that involves this type of movement. Remember, many of the muscles in the torso can be trained very effectively by preventing movement rather than producing it. You're still training the muscles involved in spinal rotation, but you're doing so in a way that poses less risk to the spine. An exercise doesn't have to involve an actual twist to work the twisting muscles. That doesn't mean you should avoid rotation altogether, but make sure the movement comes from the hip and allow the hip and back to move together at the same time, almost as if they were fused together. Final thoughts. Building a core of steel doesn't need to be complicated, time-consuming, or boring, nor does it require exercising on a Swiss ball, BOSU ball, or any other surface that isn't the floor. In fact, 
many of the muscles in your core work very hard to prevent spinal movement during exercises like squats, deadlifts, single arm rows, rollouts, and standing presses. These movements build not just core strength, but whole body strength as well. Someone who can perform a standing overhead press with three quarters of their body weight and deadlift twice their body weight will have developed a very high level of core strength simply by focusing on getting stronger in both exercises. You just listened to part two of the post titled Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Good news, business owners. Hiring game-changing employees just got way easier, thanks to Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform helping over 3 million businesses do it all, attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates. With Indeed's instant match feature, over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates the moment they sponsor a job. I especially love that if you invite these or any candidates of your choosing to apply, they are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash health. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health, and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Today's author, Christian, made a very important distinction early on in this episode. Did you catch it? Christian mentioned that in rehabilitation situations, like when someone's recovering from an injury and is receiving prescribed physical therapy, their healthcare provider may have them practice exercises using an unstable surface. This is because, based on the healthcare provider's experiences, training, and published research, this prescribed rehabilitation program is designed to help them heal and restore strength and stability to the injured area as best as possible. Christian's guidance over the past two episodes was mainly focused on those that are otherwise healthy and not following a guided rehabilitation program, but instead, want to increase their core stability. So, if you're receiving physical therapy and your provider is having you perform exercises on an unstable surface, no need to scoff at that. They are doing it for a very good reason. But, if you're otherwise healthy and are training to just be stronger overall, and that includes a core of steel, lift heavy on a stable surface. All right, that's another episode of OHD. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow with another post and where your optimal life awaits.